In this video, we will discuss using the view cube. If you'd like to follow along with this video, please open the file 0107 using the view cube.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the working with this dataset video. The view cube is an interactive navigation tool and is an easy way to change your view rotation of a 3D model. You can quickly change between standard or isometric views. The view cube is on by default and can be accessed in the upper right part of your drawing. If you'd like to turn it on or off, you go to the View tab, User Interface Panel, User Interface Dropdown, and you can turn off the View Cube. The benefit of using the View Cube is that it helps you keep track of your orientation in the drawing by displaying the current view orientation on the View Cube tool. Understanding how the View Cube provides feedback to you and how to adjust the display options will help you to proficiently navigate around views of a 3D model. The View Cube is displayed in one of two states inactive, which is as it is right now because my cursor is not hovering over it, and then there's active, and that's when the view cube will highlight when you hover your mouse into the view cube area. One of the really great things about the view cube is that you can switch between views in your drawing very easily using the compass ring. I can simply select the view by clicking on it and it'll actually automatically show me that view. You'll also note that you can also pick these different arrows right here to actually navigate to the different orientations. The compass ring that is highlighting right now also can serve as a way to rotate the view depending on the orientation. So as I click and hold the left mouse button down and move my cursor, you'll notice that it automatically will rotate the view again based upon the orientation that your drawing is set to. When the view cube is active, you'll notice that there are some additional hotspots available as well. We have the home button right here. If I click that, that puts it to the home button, which you can set to your own orientation. We'll show you that in a second. You have all these different hotspots on the cube that allow you to change to the different orientations on the cube. We have the coordinate system drop down right here. What this will do, this is a quick way to activate a saved UCS or the world coordinate system. By simply clicking on it, you'll notice that my compass, let me zoom in here a little bit, has automatically changed to the east side of the house. If I want to change it to the west side of the house, I simply hover into this, click on west side, and that was changed to the west side of the house. Again, these are named UCSs which I have created. We will discuss UCSs later on in a future video. If you'd like to change it back to the world coordinate system, you simply select that and it is now back to the default 0, 0 location. Again, one of the great things about the view cube is that you can simply click on the different hotspots of the view cube to rotate the view as you need to. And with the northwest east south compass, you can obviously see exactly the orientation of your drawing. It's just a great little way to see the orientation that you are currently at. To access any of the settings or options available for the view cube, as I always say, when it comes to the interface, when in doubt, right click. So when you hover your mouse into the view cube, simply right click, and you'll notice that you have some options. We can select home, which of course is just that simple home button right there. We can right click and change the options to parallel, perspective, perspective with ortho faces, set current view as home, or the view cube settings. So let's talk a little bit more detail about some of these settings here. The parallel setting displays the current view using parallel projection. This type of view shows a 3D view as if a hypothetical camera point and target point area are in the same position. This will usually show a kind of flat view. So if I change my orientation to isometric in some sort of way, you'll see that it's showing in a very flat orientation. However, perspective displays the current view using a perspective projection. This type of view shows a 3D view as if a hypothetical camera point and a target point have a distance between them. This creates a more realistic view. So as you can see, as I zoom in here, the surface is a little bit distorted because it's set to a perspective view. Lastly, we have perspective with ortho faces. By selecting that, what that does is it will automatically display the current view using perspective or parallel projection depending on the view. When the current view is in an isometric view, as it is right now, it displays as a perspective projection. However, if you change the view to an orthogonal view, such as top, left, front, right, etc., it displays it in a parallel projection. To set the current view as home, you can simply select this option right here. That way, if you rotate the view, as I'm doing here by simply clicking and holding down the mouse on the view cube, and I want to set it back to the home view, I can again, as we showed this before, you can simply click the home view, and that is now the home view. 
You also have some additional settings, which we'll go into in a second. And of course, there's the help should you require further information about the different settings of the ViewCube. Let's go ahead and look at the ViewCube settings. In the ViewCube settings dialog box, we have a few options available to us. We have the on screen position, which we can change right here. This will basically put it into the different locations of the interface and where you feel most comfortable with it. You can have the ViewCube size set to automatic. So as you change the viewport size, it'll resize automatically. If you want to keep it a consistent size, you can toggle this off and you can leave it as to whatever size you want, small, normal, or large. You can also change the opacity of it. In other words, can you see through it or not? That's up to you as far as how you want to display it. If you want this to be a low opacity, click OK here. Now, as you can see, it's very low. And notice how it's no longer automatically resizing it. It's showing it at that large size. Let's go ahead and right click again and go to view cube settings and we'll set it back to automatic. I personally like the automatic setting. You can also set this to when dragging on the view cube to snap automatically to the closest view. Again, that's top, right, etc. And when clicking on the view cube, you have a few options as well. Zoom to extents after view change. It specifies if the model is forced to fit the current viewport after a view change. Use view transitions when switching views. This one controls the use of smooth view transitions when switching between views. Orient view cube to current UCS. So this will orient as it states the view cube based on the current UCS or world coordinate system of the model. The keep scene upright option will specify whether the viewpoint of the model can be turned upside down or not. Lastly, show compass below the view cube controls whether the compass is displayed below the view cube. The north direction indicated on the compass is the value defined by the north direction system variable. One of the other really cool things about using the view cube is that it appears in each viewport showing you the different orientations. We haven't discussed viewports yet and we will in a future video. But let's go ahead and just quickly add another viewport here. Notice how the view cube automatically appears in each of the different viewports. I can then use the view cube to change the orientation within the viewport I am working in. This concludes this video discussing using the view cube.